and I learned that the bees are pretty important. Like they pollinate a lot of the food, fruits and vegetables, and even they contribute to like the dairy and things that I like to eat every day. And I also learned that they were dying. And so that's, that's where the idea for me and the bees came. So we were talking about your, your origin story, uh, which is fascinating. It started from what an, an event that most people don't like to experience, which is getting stung by a bee. And you unfortunately got stung twice by a bee, uh, which sent you down this path. So for those who have not heard how um, you originated the idea to produce lemonade using um, honeybees as opposed to sugar, like most of us, uh, start at the beginning and tell people what happened. Okay. So the, the fun thing about telling my story is I always, I guess I always add a different thing each time. So that's one thing that keeps it cool. But I started <laughs> when I was four and a half. I signed up in the local business fair in Austin, which happens each year. And it's where kids can come up with a business idea and sell a product. And so at my school, there was a poster for it. My parents decided to allow me to sign up because I asked them a bunch of questions about it. And so over the summer, I had to figure out what product I was going to create and sell. And I probably, I probably should have done it before I signed up, but I was going to do it eventually. And so over the summer, I got a cookbook from my great granny Helen for flaxseed lemonade. And it was like this 1940s cookbook. The binding was falling off and there were like like notes and markups all in the pages of her favorite recipes. But one of them was flaxseed lemonade that we tried with my family and it tasted pretty good. And another thing that happened that same summer was I got sung by a bee and then less than a week later at another family event, I got sung by a bee again. And I that was pretty scary for me. I thought I was going to get sung by a bee all the time, like for the rest of the summer, or at, at least for a while. And so my parents said, how about you do a little bit of research on them? Or how about you learn about the bees? I reluctantly did that, like through animated videos and picture books, but I learned that the bees are pretty important. Like they pollinate a lot of the food, fruits and vegetables, and even they contribute to like the dairy and things that I like to eat every day. And I also learned that they were dying. And so that's, that's where the idea for me and the bees came from. It was, I want to do honey sweetened lemonade and donate a portion to organizations that help save the bees. And I would do this through my great granny Helen's recipe. Oh, wow. So um, your great grandmother, when you got the recipe that uh, it, it, I assume she was still living, obviously. Um, so what did she think about you turning all of this into, you know, you making it for yourself? So I think, I think she was, she, she said, I'm sorry, I think she was really, really proud of me and of my idea. And I didn't, I didn't just copy the recipe, but I did get inspiration from the flaxseed part. Cause I had never heard of flaxseed and lemonade. And I remember asking <laughs> my mom, what does it do? And she's like, it helps keep you going. But it was, it was like a new twist for lemonade. And that I got from my great granny, Helen. Some, some of the things in her cookbook, like ingredients like lard, I had also never heard of. And those were new to me. Which but, she, oh, you mean the, that she cooked other things with like, yes, lard? Yes, okay. yes, yes. One of her ingredients. Old school. Oh, yeah. And so uh, <laughs> I remember when we got the product into bottles, we brought it to her. And the story was on the back of the bottle. And it had her, like, great granny Helen's 1940s cookbook and we were reading it aloud to her because she couldn't read it but we were reading it aloud to her and she was just smiling and saying like you know I'm always so proud of you so that that was a really cool memory and also the fact that we were able to get it into stores in South Carolina which is where she's from South Carolina um, while she was alive was also amazing because like she got to see the bottle and then see it get into a store near her oh wow so uh, you start from there and then, um, you know, a lot of people may have, obviously they may recognize you from being on, on Shark Tank, mm -hmm. uh, where uh, I think you were nine when you were on Shark Tank or were you younger than that? Yes, I, I was nine when I went on, about to turn 10, and I think it was mm -hmm. 10 when, I, when it aired. Because there, was, there mm -hmm. was a little bit of a, a gap because, you know, not all Shark Tank episodes um, First, not all, all businesses make it on Shark Tank, and then not all Shark Tank episodes air, and then you don't know if your episode is going to air within that season or next season. But for me, it filmed when I was 
nine, and then aired when I was 10. So you go on Shark Tank, which just as the show uh, title suggests, it is, it is, you know, kind of a intimidating experience. And yeah. uh, you don't often see a lot of kids on there. I mean, the adults look petrified and you just look so smooth and natural <laughs> with it. Uh, and Damon John decides to, to invest uh, in your company, uh, to invest sixty thousand dollars, I believe that was the investment. So, what did that mean for you uh, in terms of boosting your confidence? That here you have this very successful bus businessman who has decided to give you a sixty thousand dollar investment. Well, I mean, you kind of said it. It was boost. It boosted my confidence because it took a lot of confidence to get on. And I guess in the shark in the Shark Tank in the first place. It was at first when we the African-American Chamber of Commerce reached out to us and said, would you be interested? And my parents were like, no, we've seen the sharks. They can be brutal. It doesn't matter if it's a kid. They can still be brutal. And they didn't want me to stop, um, like, stop selling me in the bees or be sweet at the time just because I got nose from a shark. And after a little bit of convincing, my parents let me do the first audition. And it was it took a lot of building of confidence, like getting the pitch, pitching to family and friends, and then to pe like people who we knew had businesses and getting feedback on that, some of that pretty harsh feedback and just actually changing the pitch. And going on Shark Tank, we could see a lot of that paid off because we landed a deal and we sparked the interest of uh, Mr. Damon John, who has been like an investor and a mentor since the show. But I think the main one was the main opportunity that it brought was getting the product known because that was that was really the first opportunity on national tv before that we were in maybe around around 26 stores in texas and uh what shark tank allowed us to do is get more coverage which then turned into people reaching out to the store saying hey why don't you have this product i want to carry it in my store